G'day guys, welcome back to Remote Learning number six. I know we're all excited, ready to rock and roll and uh, get back into it. Bringing back the YouTube channel by popular demand, so recording some videos for our new topic of graphs and networks, so chapter nine in the textbook. So for starters today, we're just gonna be looking at 9.2, which is the basic concepts, a lot of definitions, um, just getting the ba our basic head around around um, a lot of the network concepts that we'll be looking at throughout this whole topic. So a lot of the concepts today, while simple, will underpin a lot of the more advanced ones that we'll be looking at. Uh, down the track. So this part of the topic is called undirected graphs and networks. Down the track we'll be looking at directed, which is your um, critical path analysis and your flow, that sort of thing. So graphs and networks, there's a lot of practical applications for these. We'll get to that down the track, but for now, just definitions and basic concepts. All right, so a network or graph made up of edges and vertices. Sometimes the vertices are called nodes, depending on the uh, resource that you're looking at. But typically, to put it very, very simply, the vertices are called the nodes, uh, look like this. They can sometimes have just dots with the letter next to it, but typically they will be represented by uh, some sort of letter. And then edges connect them up. So these connections or these edges can look like anything depending on the, uh, the context or the question that we're looking at. A lot of the uh, practical applications we'll be looking at down the track will be roads between towns or uh, different communications between people. So what we have here, the A, B, C, D, they represent our vertices. Or nodes. And these red lines represent our edges. What we have here at C, you can see we've got an edge that connects back to the same vertex. That's what we refer to as a loop. So a loop connects a vertex to itself. Also, you notice here between A and B, we have what's called a multiple edge. Simply just two or more edges connecting up the two vertices here. So edges and vertices underpin the majority of this topic. Now when looking at the vertices, a thing that we often analyze is what's called their degree. All right, so the degree of a vertex refers to how many edges are connected to it. So we'll use the same example I've drawn up here. The degree of vertex D is two because we have two edges connecting to it. The degree of vertex B is three. Now this one here with C, we count the loop as two degrees. We count both edges, or sorry, both ends of the one edge um, as a two degrees. So the degree of C would be one, two, three, and four. So a loop contributes two degrees to that one vertex. That's important to remember. When we write it out, we often write it like this. So deg of A means degree of A, in this case is three. Degree or deg of B is also three. Degree of C, as we just talked about, is Four, and finally the degree of D is two. Often, and there'll be some other concepts that look at this as well, talk about odd and even degrees. That just refers to whether the degree of a number is odd or even. So in this case, A and B, they're both odd vertices or odd degree vertices because they're three. D and C, they're even, simply because the number is even, four and two. So if you ever get a question about odd and even degrees, that's what um, 
That's what that refers to. Often we'll also need to write out almost coordinates that um, demonstrate the connections between vertices inside of a network. And it does have a little bit of an overlap with matrices in this part as well. Let's label, we'll draw up another um, graph. We've got five vertices, A, B, C, D, E. Sometimes they'll be numbered rather than lettered, but most of the time we just represent them with letters. All right, so we got five vertices. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight edges in total. And we have quite a lot of, of connections here. So all our vertices in total, we have A, B, C, D, and E. That's just a way to write out what vertices we have. V equals and then the squiggly brackets, A, B, C, D, and E. Now, if I wanted to demonstrate a connection between A and D, which in this case, uh, we have one, all I would write, so vertex A to vertex D. Oops. Like so. In the squiggly brackets, A and D just represents that there is a connection between um, vertex A and vertex D. Sorry, probably don't need squiggly for that. I won't do every single connection here because there's quite a lot, but another example, vertex D to vertex E, we have multiple edge. So in this case, I could write that one out three times because there are three connections. Like so. There are quite a few. When you go through, oh, there goes my hat. When you go through and write these out, you won't get any that involve C. The reason is because that's an isolated vertex, so it's by itself. So I'll just add that here as well, with a little note. Isolated vertex, meaning it doesn't have any friends, there's no connections. It's by itself. So you often get questions that will list the coordinates like this, showing the connections. You need to be able to take that information and convert it into a network. Last little thing I want to go through is where the crossover with matrices occurs. So remember, we looked at some matrices and then converted them into a graph and network. We're just doing the exact same thing. So let's say we have a, a graph. I'll just use this one up here. All right, so there are five vertices. A to A is zero. I'll start with the diagonal. B to B, now we do have a connection from B to B. When we're doing this in a uh, matrix form, when we have a loop, it only counts as one inside the adjacency matrix, all right? So don't count as two. It does count as two degrees, but when we put it in a matrix, it only contributes one. There's no other loops. So C to C, D to D, and E to E. All right, now we can go through. Because this is undirected, it's going to be symmetrical on that leading diagonal. So A to B is 1, it's going to be the same from B to A. A to C is 0, so C to A is going to be 0. So I can kind of do this two ways at once. A to D is 1, A to E is 0, same from E to A. 
B to C is zero. B to D is one. And B to E is one. C to D, zero. C to E, zero. And finally, D to E is three. So you notice that the column and row of C are all zeros. Makes sense because it's an isolated vertex. It has literally no other connections to any of the other vertices in the graph. So that's pretty much it for 9.2. Really good consolidation tool to make sure you do all those questions though, because as I said, a lot of the concepts in here underpin the whole topic. Thanks guys.